Hello, everyone. Let's get right to it. We will be talking about market research tools, and we will be providing analysis and consumer feedback from having run data scrapes. Diaper Testing International is a consulting firm specializing in market research, diaper design, and we do have a diaper testing laboratory in Houston, Texas, where we offer a variety of services, including performance benchmarks and other projects. As consultants for the personal absorbent hygiene industry, we've been involved in many projects to help design or improve diapers for markets all across the world. And here's a question. What parameters are important in designing a diaper for a specific market? How do you go about it? So when designing a diaper, you must consider many things. And we're going to run through some of the questions or some of the basic questions that you want to be asking. What level of absorbency does your market require? The total capacity and performance of a diaper will be affected by disposable income and usually be defined by the market leader. In understanding the absorbency needs of a market, we need to consider consumer habits, including how caretakers behave, the expected amount of diaper changes, the specific needs of the user, and then what can be met within the market tier and costing concerns. But further, absorbency is an iffy one, and we do want to get into it in a little bit. Other things to consider, does your market have a preference over thick diapers, perceiving it as having more capacity, or will your market prefer a thin diaper with the notion of it aiding in mobility and comfort? Soft or premium-like materials versus a low price, do they value these premium materials over an increase in price? Is there value to the customer in sustainable process? Or is there value to the customer in plant-based or natural alternatives? When it comes to art and prints, will your market prefer simplicity, patterns, or a trademark Disney or Sesame Street character? Will you run boy versus girls designs or unisex prints? There are some countries where pants are the, that pants are the norm and, and not open tape diapers. In India, more than 90% of the market share is owned by diaper pants. Pants are growing in many countries around the world with growth of more than 20% in China. In the U.S., pan sales are expected to grow by 4%, where open tape diapers will see no growth. Next. When it comes to the performance of the diaper core, there are three parameters that have been used by the industry to define absorbency. Rewet, the measure of dryness. Speed of acquisition, how quickly the core is able to assimilate the urine. And capacity, how much total urine a diaper can hold. So let's take a look at capacity for a second here and look at some of the product offerings of Procter & Gamble. Uh, this year, Procter & Gamble released a new brand of diapers separate from their Pampers name called All Good, launched exclusively with Walmart, and it does bring social responsibility to the picture as they donate diapers for every purchase that a customer makes. Additionally, they claim to have none of the bad ingredients, and that's the All Good name. So when looking at this graph for quick reference, the free swell in our lab is measured as a 10 minute dunk test, then a two minute drip. The diapers are then exposed to a 3200 RPM centrifuge for one minute to record how much saline they can retain. These are not intended to be representative of the pressure a baby will exert, but it allows us to compare capacity designed between different brands. So in terms of core design, here we can see the sap and curly fiber loading of All Good is most similar to that of Love's. All Good diapers are essentially Love's with a softer back sheet for more premium feel. Here we see other US brands from our database. Uh, these were diapers tested in, in late 2019. We see the Walmart, Target, Kroger, and Amazon private labels, along with the multinational brands, which is our Huggies and Pampers, and privately owned Honest and Hello Bello brands. So centrifugal retentive capacity across these diapers varies from the lower end of 240 grams to 420 grams, with the lowest capacity marked by All Good and Loves and the highest capacity by Hello Bello, with some other high ones worth mentioning. Huggies, Snug and Dry, and Walmart Parents' Choice, both brands which are for the mass or value tier products, have a notably high capacity. For years, Procter & Gamble has argued that capacity does not matter past a sufficient threshold. In essence, saying, hey, if a size 4 baby will pee 130 or 230 milliliters of urine before the next diaper change, do we need a diaper that can hold more than 420 milliliters of urine? 
We recently had an opportunity to review one of the legal cases against Procter & Gamble by Kimberly Clark, where absorbency marketing claims were contested. They were basically arguing about absorbency and what it means to the consumer. It's an old case, but basically Procter & Gamble claimed in an ad to have more absorbency than a Huggies brand product. When Kimberly Clark contested the claim, they went into a long case where both parties had to present evidence and yada yada. What was incredible to me is that in establishing the reference or the framework for the case, both parties agreed that absorbency, as perceived by the consumer, is a combination of these three parameters, rewet, speed, and capacity. Long story short, Procter & Gamble won the case. They were able to prove that their diapers are made, made to meet the capacity of the 96th percentile baby overnight urine. Since most babies will pee less than that, they claimed, then more capacity is irrelevant as it won't be perceived by the consumers. Once that was out of the picture, they were quickly able to prove that the Pampers at that point had um, a better rewet and faster speed than the Huggies at that point, or that brand. Now, to nitpick here, being within the 96th percentile sounds good, but what about all the times babies pee more than that? Parents in the U.S. change about 160 diapers per month. Tell me that 96% of those will not leak due to maximum capacity, and I'll tell you that's still six diapers per month that may leak due to capacity, and that's without counting the others that will leak prematurely due to bad fit or other issues. So basically, these three metrics are exceedingly important for our industry. Uh, they're used for running benchmark, uh, to be able to benchmark different diaper cores, um, to run quality control and process checks. But they're not what the understanding of absorbency is to the consumers. Parents don't care about speed. They won't even notice if a diaper takes 15 seconds or 30 seconds to completely assimilate the urine onto the diaper core, they won't know any difference. And neither will the baby really. Pee is warm, and if it's sitting in the in if their butt is sitting in a pool of uh, urine, it's going to be warm. It's not going to be uncomfortable, so they won't really notice. Capacity also will not matter to the consumer, as excess unused capacity will go unnoticed as well, as what Procter and Gamble says. So we propose, when considering absorbency from the point of view of consumers, only two things matter: rewet and leakages. Capacity and speed only matter in their contribution to preventing leakages. So who knows, maybe if Kimberly Clark would have argued that it's ultimately leakages and dryness that consumers can perceive and associate with absorbency, maybe they wouldn't have lost the case. As researchers ourselves, it's easy to get carried away with laboratory tests, but it's important to understand the limits of lab testing as well. The limits and the strengths. Our diaper testing laboratory allows us to run quality control and audits, benchmark performance across brands and markets, gain competitive intelligence through reverse engineering and cost analysis of diapers. But even if you test with mannequins or try to best assimilate consumer relevant settings, they cannot be equally representative of real consumer use and will not provide perception insights. So how can we fill in the gaps to understand consumer needs and user perception? This is where market research tools come in. We're going to about, talk about uh, three tools where we provide services, but you can also do them yourself. Social media listening, better utilization of subscribers, and home user tests and focus groups. So let's start with the first one, social media listening. I know what you're thinking, ah, these millennial women is here telling us to get on social media. It's nothing like that. The internet has so much public access information and our consumers are sharing information. If you want to better understand the consumer and their needs, do some social media listening. Join Facebook groups, Reddit groups, read public reviews. This is uh, basically free information and it shouldn't be limited to just marketers. Anyone in research and development should be in touch with what consumers need and drive that to innovation. Irene is going to, going to show you what social media listening can look like when it's free, then also when it involves manual data scraping. And then I'm gonna show you what you can do to analyze information when you can run full data scrapes and review mining. With Facebook, you can join specific groups and learn what motivates parents or users 
and what their concerns may be. You can gain insight into very specific users and understand the profiles by area, demographics, or et cetera. Like this thread from the Houston Moms Facebook group, Houston mothers are commenting about diapers and their suggestions. Or you can also be a part of niche groups like the Overactive Bladder Support Group where group participants share information on sensitive topics that would otherwise perhaps be difficult to ask from your consumers. And another free platform is Reddit. Reddit opens the door to the whole wide world of consumers segmented into specific groups such as parenting, pregnancy, and neurosis, or even ABDL communities, like um, this thread asking what your favorite diapers are, or this one that garnered 254 comments. With Reddit being an, an anonymous platform and user upvoted, you can gain insight into what the majority of the segment thinks. Protected by their anonymity, people can feel more comfortable delving into subjects and sharing their thoughts that they might have otherwise not divulged had this been any other social media platform, and more so than Facebook where your profile can be seen. One thing to consider though, is that Reddit has no boundaries and thus is not area specific, unlike Facebook where you can really zoom in into allocation or demographic. Another tool that is available and people tend to overlook is manual data scrape. For example, you can manually sort reviews and manually categorize each one. Now, there are robots and word analysis softwares that you can use, but when you choose to do this manually, you, number one, save money, but two, you are also able to translate what the consumer's sentiment and what they're saying is. This is still free, but will require a lot of time to manually sort the data. Um, for example, uh, this is something we presented during last year's workshop. We manually analyzed and categorized 2,260 Amazon um, negative reviews for seven brands to understand consumer complaints. This took one person about three to four days to complete. So here, all the negative reviews coming from verified Amazon purchases across these brands were read, analyzed, and classified into these categories. 46 of the total complaints coming from the reviews were diaper performance related, out of which, not surprisingly, 53% of those complaints were regarding leakages following close by rashes and the supposed lack, diapers lack of absorbency. This will help you understand what the percentage of complaints are customary by category. The effort here in manually sorting all these reviews takes a lot of time, but it, it can be worth it. So now we were also able to run data scraping at scale so receiving all of this information with, from Amazon reviews um, and data mining them with software. In this case, we honed in on five specific brands that were big sellers in Amazon. We chose Huggies Little Snugglers, Pampers Swaddlers, Honest Company Diapers, Huggies Special Delivery, and Pampers Pure. Basically, um, the two last ones, Special Delivery and Pure, are the recently launched iterations of a more premium product for Pampers and Huggies, partly as a response to Honest that had been gaining a lot of um, market share. So on looking at these, we look that we see that Huggies Little Snugglers had a total of 24, over 24,000 total ratings, Swaddlers more than 43,000 ratings in Amazon through their reviews and, and star ratings. But when we received all of this data, we were able to clean it up to see which ones of these reviews were specifically verified Google reviews, um, sorry, Amazon reviews. And Amazon runs this algorithm to know if you re to categorize you as a verified review based on your purchasing history, if this is your first time purchasing, uh, or if you receive the product at a discount or heavily discounted. Um, and and those, those things would remove you, let's say, from being verified. So basically, when we look at the verified reviews, we know that these are customers that effectively bought the product and felt that they had a need to share something about it through a review. For Little Snugglers, we found a total of 2,000 verified reviews, about more than 2,000. For Pampler, Pampers Swaddlers, more than 3,000. Honest Company, we found 782 verified reviews. Special Delivery, 373. And for the Pure Brand, 464. 
before I get into this graph, as Natalia mentioned here, um, to reiterate, we are tracking specifically the verified Amazon review average rating per quarter. So this is not what the what Amazon shows when you go into the website and see the Amazon rating, but instead what we saw when we ran the analysis of the verified reviewers and what the ratings they were giving was. You can consider this as the representation of customers who truly bought the product on Amazon and later had feedback said. During the second and third quarters of this year, we see a drop in the verified Amazon star rating reviews across these brands. In quarter two, Little Snugglers, Swaddlers, and Honest experienced a drop, while the Special Delivery and the Pure had their descent during quarter three. We can see the effects of the pandemic kicking off at the end of quarter one. Mid end March, at least here in the US, there was a lot, much uncertainty, panic buying, and shortages that led a lot of customers to turn to e commerce and purchase diapers online and even venture into buying brands they don't, don't or wouldn't normally buy. So we analyzed the negative reviews that were affecting these drops. And for example, out of Huggies Little Snugglers, total reviews for quarter two, 4% were negative in relation to the pandemic. We classify pandemic related reasons as any that includes uh, wrong orders or shipment issues. We know Amazon and logistics centers were overloaded during that time and resulted in many shipment mistakes or delays. We also included reviewers who stated that they were only buying this brand because their usual brand was out of stock. Now, Honest had a more drastic drop with almost 10% of its total reviews for that quarter being pandemic affected. Many were what we call pandemic user change customers, meaning they are not a recurring loyal customer for Honest and instead part of those who bought Honest because they couldn't afford uh, they couldn't get a hold of their usual preferred brand during the shortages. So not the typical audience for Honest and possibly a more critical um, customer, more critical of their diapers. We're seeing demand increased, more, more people are buying online and companies have not been able to react quickly enough to artificially inflate the rating. So in fact, these ratings might even perhaps be more representative of what the true user thinks. Moving on. So let's take a quick refresher into these brands and the message that they convey, because we will be running an analysis on how effective the communication and product proposition is. Uh, Irene is going to delve into each of these brands and just remind you of what kind of marketing they use. For Huggies Little Snugglers, we can see their biggest differentiating feature here compared to other brands, even compared to other Huggies, is the non-woven waist elastic pocketed back waistband, which supposedly helps prevent blowouts and leakages. They also updated some of their terminology to reflect consumer safety trends like, focus, like a focus on chlorine and being hypoallergenic. Pampers Swaddlers, which used to be the most premium Pampers until Pampers Pure was introduced, Play with, plays with the idea of trust by introducing pediatricians. Um, they also did update some of their lingo as well to talk about free of parabens and being hypoallergenic. So, so far, these two, uh, Little Snugglers and Swaddlers, have primarily focused more on performance and features. Honest Company uh, is privately owned and represents about 2% of the market share. They highlight sustainable materials, have a made without list, and showcase a variety of different patterns and designs. These fashion forward designs and safety claims really propelled the brand forward when it was first released. After honest success, both Pampers and Huggies released their own premium brand that would have cuter designs and similar focus on safety and sustainability. Huggies launched special delivery in 2019 with a much softer back sheet and making a claim on plant-based and no harsh ingredients. And Pampers Pure has really gone above and beyond showcasing their stance on sustainability, throwing in words like plant-based, made with a cotton blend, hypoallergenic, but also, as you can see on the right, they have also shifted some of their marketing focus to reflect sustainability. So how effectively are the diaper features and brand story communicated with consumers? What resonates the most when these consumers who buy these products later decide to share feedback about their experience? 
From all of the Amazon verified reviews, basically we first grabbed all of the five star reviews to run a word cloud and see what consumers were loving the most about these products or what words are resonating the most with them. So at the beginning, this was basically the word cloud that we got, where we see that from the five star reviews for Amazon, specifically for Honest, we see words like diaper, love, brand, and this was recurrent across all the brands. And it makes sense. They're talking about all the stuff that they love um, their five-star reviews, but we really wanted to be able to get feedback about what specifically they like between each diaper brand. So we ran a separate analysis where we removed words like diaper, love, brand, never, always. And this is what we got. So for Huggies Little Snugglers, and basically for all of the brands or most of the brands, we saw fit and leak being a very prominent, important word that keeps being recurrent in the reviews. So probably since they're positive reviews, they're talking about how they don't leak or they avoided a leakage, et cetera. But when we look at Huggies Little Snuggler specifically, and you'll remember how Irene had mentioned that in their design, they have this non-woven pocket at the back designed to contain leakages and blowouts. And the consumers have clearly noticed and are mentioning it in the positive reviews. There's words like back, waist, pocket, blowout, hold, or holding these blowouts and leakages. Additionally, something that we see in both the Huggies Little Snugglers and Pampers Swaddlers is this notion of reliability and trustworthiness of a brand that has a long-standing history. So we see that there are words like two, I have uh, two kids, three kids, you know, more seasoned parents, grandparents through the word granddaughter, grandson. This is a go-to brand for people who have grandchildren. The word hospital, which reminds us of trustworthiness. Now we will look at Pampers Swaddlers. Price grabs a big real estate chunk here. The word hospital, grandchild, and all these words that we had discussed earlier make an appearance here as well, even nephew. Another thing they're sharing about Pampers and even using the correct terminology is the wetness indicator, the blue line, the line. They're noticing this specific feature for Pampers Swaddlers. Looking at honest diapers, um, the distribution of words here is very, very different. Of course, leak is still there. Absorbent grabs a bigger hold here. But cute, design, adorable, print. These words are recurrent among the positive reviews. And Honest has done a great job presenting a variety of patterns that are fashion forward. And their customers are really raving about it. This is what they like about the brand. We do also see the word rash is bigger here than in swaddlers and snugglers, kind of alluding to this notion that being a more natural or green brand will expose babies to less chemicals, which results in less diaper rash. Now, Pampers Pure, basically the reaction of Pampers to Honest and being able to introduce a more luxury good diaper to the product family, we see they've done a good job at communicating their diaper is more natural and pure, which customers associate with less rashes, the word rash here is big again, and key words like sensitive, skin, um, chemical, clean, harmful, gentle, natural. Even the word organic uh, makes an appearance here. And I mean, we know that none of the components in the diaper are organic, but this is what the consumers are talking about within this brand. Fit is no longer really being discussed with definitely a bigger focus on rash here. Now looking at Huggy's special delivery, wow, the word soft really recurrent across the happy customers. Rash is still there, the word absorbent pops up, and then also the word worth, that these are worth the price. And blowout still remains here consistent with the Huggy's offering of possibly being better at holding blowouts. blowouts. So now we wanted to run an analysis of all the words and all of the reviews to understand if the consumers value sustainability. So for sustainability, we're honing in on these specific words, ethics, eco, earth, a big one for us in the industry, which is landfill. Basically, any of these words were used to denote that the customer cares in some way or form about sustainability. And then we checked all of the reviews, including the negative reviews and the positive reviews, to see if any of these words appear in the review. For swaddlers and snugglers, we see less than 1% of the reviews mentioning any of these words. 1% to 2% for the other brands. 
Now we wanted to run a similar analysis on how many customers care about a brand being more natural or devoid of toxins. We grabbed all of these words, including toxic, bleach, natural, free of chemicals, um, organic, etc. And these were used to denote the sort of sentiment from the consumers. Now, I do want to mention that basically any of these words were used, but also in context. So if anyone said, oh, they're naturally better, that was not used to denote natural. So we did uh, look at the reviews and make sure that they were within context. And we see that for Huggies Little Snugglers and Pampers Swaddlers, less than 1% of all the reviews contain any of these words. But for Honest, and, uh, and Honest has marketed itself as a more responsible company, more honest, the reviews of this product does show that the customers are talking about these words. Honest used to own this space, and now we see Pampers Pure doing an excellent job advertising these consumer perceived benefits, where 15% of all the reviews mentioned one of these words at least. So when we're talking about these sustainability, this natural claims, um, and now soft and prints, which we wanted to run as well, we're talking about uh, whether the consumers notice or care about any of these words. Um, when we talk about sustainability and natural words, we're basically talking about whether the customers care about these words, regardless of whether they were in a good or bad way. Maybe some of them were saying, I wish that these diapers were more organic or something of the sort. And these were still counted as they still represent something the consumer is noticing or caring about. So we ran an analysis for the word soft and any of its derivatives, soft, soft, or softest. And we see that Little Snugglers um, has 12% of all reviews contain the word soft. For Swaddlers, this was 5%, for Honest, 8%. And for Huggies Special Delivery, 40% of all of the reviews contain the word soft. Well, wow, they're really not only communicating it through their brand messages, but when the consumers are getting these diapers, they're noticing how soft they are. They're talking about it. I'm sorry. Uh, for Pampers Pure, we see this being 14% mentioned soft. So across both of the Huggies brands, we do see them doing a better job of conveying softness to the end consumer compared to its competitors. For prints, patterns, and designs, all these kind of words were put together. And we see that Honest has 10% of total reviews mention the word prints in some way or form, which is not surprising. They do offer, like I think, nine different patterns to choose from when you choose your subscription. So you can choose whether you're going to get the dinosaurs or the strawberries. And Special Delivery and Pure have updated their designs to be more cute, but they still don't offer too many choices. And while the consumers are noticing and talking about it a bit more, it doesn't come close to what the offering for Honest is. So when we look at all of these and the total, you think that sustainability is not important to the American market. And I mean, maybe is sustainability important to the American market? I mean, we can tell that they're not specifically looking for these traits. And uh, possibly earlier, you may have seen a slide shared from Euromonitor where we see the most important um, features that are looked for by, um, by Americans. And within the first five most important ones, one of them was value. So Americans value value. And though they don't independently seek sustainability, if one brand has some plant-based component or is made with green energy, these are things that are adding value to a purchase that they're making. And in that sense, it's, it's valuable to them. So basically, this was an example of uh, something that you can do when you uh, do social media listening, and, and especially when you hone in on social media listening through data scraping. So now I wanted to quickly talk about subscriber utilization, which was another of the tools. And I'm not going to get into it too much because uh, I want to respect the timing of this um, presentation and we're almost running out of time. Um, I've talked in other presentations about the importance of having your own subscribers. I'm not going to get into that. But what do we know about your subscribers? So we know they're your target market. They're the right demographics. They've purchased your product before. If they follow your social media or your newsletter, then they're continuously exposed to your brand and ideas. 
We do also know that they may be biased towards your brand. Maybe they're not going to be very good at providing objective feedback. Um, something else that we wanted to talk about was tracking for consumer complaints. And I know that this can be overwhelming in today's um, ambience where um, you're selling through many channels and consumers are communicating with you through many channels. Maybe you're, you're trying to run analysis through, through social media, but you're also getting feedback from the retailers that are selling your product on how many uh, returns there are. So it may be difficult to track all of these, but at least for direct to consumer brands, you can track consumer complaints when you're processing returns, when your subscriptions are canceled, and also when a complaint is submitted to you directly. And um, although there are other forms to get customer uh, complaints and feedback, it's best to keep them separate so that you're not by accident running uh, duplicates. And when you're collecting data on these complaints, it's very important to have a customer service team that is well trained to uh, translate these languages from the consumer because if you can sort the complaints on the spot, then later you can run easier analysis on them. So if you train them to, to okay, if they're talking about little particles exploding when the baby, okay, okay, train them to know that this is sap and they're talking about sap leakages and then categorize them correctly. So when you do it on the spot, you can later save yourself time. Alternatively, if you're too big of a brand and you have way too many, you're, you're getting way too much feedback across way too many mediums, then obviously you can still run word mining for, for these words. Um, and uh, when you're recording leakages, ask for the correct information. Ask for the age of the baby, the weight of the baby, the, the waste if you can, if you can't, the body composition, how long they were using the diaper, the position of the baby. Uh, so you can truly use customer complaints to improve your product. Now, again, this third tool about running um, better or more effective home user tests, we're not going to be able to get into it too deeply. Let's look at it quickly. So when you're running a home user test or focus group, um, you want to run, someone's at the door, you want to run um, first a preliminary test to understand the product. So, so run it through the lab. This is a good chance where first you want to run, run a lab analysis, how well the performance of the core is. Um, really form your own hypothesis. Don't wait until you, you hear, um, you hear new things from the customers, look, really try to predict what they're going to be possibly talking about. Uh, not customers, but uh, the panel in this case. You want to establish clear goals. And for this, uh, I believe that it's really important that whoever is running the study or is designing the study, <coughs> excuse me, uh, they should fully understand the products. So before, we didn't used to run home user tests in-house. Um, so we've seen a lot of our clients run focus groups independently, but we always noted that whoever is um, running these doesn't fully have an understanding of the, of the diaper, of the diaper core, of the different components of a diaper. Um, so when, when you can pair it together with the understanding, then you can have better conclusions or more, more useful conclusions. When you design the study, um, do it with the understanding of diaper performance. Uh, you know, different weather is going to affect sweat rates and urine habits. All these things that really have to be taken into account. Um, is it the pool season? They're not going to be changing the diaper. Um, they're not going to be wearing diaper if it's pool season. Or are they going to be? Are the the panel? Um, are they going to be varying caretakers? Is the potty training process has been involved? You know, you're going to want to avoid that if you want to get meaningful feedback about uh, specific performance. And when you're um, for the product testing, you want to know specifically what the goal is going to be because there's going to be different um, designs for different testing needs. Um, if you want to track the performance, are you going to want to do leakage diaries versus um, a trial period and then a survey or perception tests. Uh, you're going to run monadic, paired, sequential testing. All these needs to be taken into account. And then finally, make sure that the panel group is representative of your market. We, we did run a, um, a study where in the suburbs where it turned out that most of the parents were Huggies moms because there was a Costco in the area and everyone was just buying from Costco and you know in Costco you're only going to get Kirkland or Huggies both of which are essentially a Kimberly Clark product. 
um, it's not going to be representative of the market that is used to pamper style chassis. Uh, this is an example, basically, of one of our reports, how we how we provide the data. And if you'd like to see a sample of our report, just send us a message and we'll send you, we'd be happy to send you a sample. So basically, all of these tools and these questions can be used uh, to understand how to design a diaper for a specific market. I hope that this has been uh, helpful. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations. Thanks and stay safe, y'all.